For Krima Media's policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled Let's Not Have Illusions Over ANC Conference Election Results. We Need a Reset. The general coverage of the African National Congress uh, Conference in December has been one of the optimism uh, suggesting that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa is now free to embark on his renewal process. Do you place no weight on this sentiment, Professor? Yes, I place very little weight on it because what they are saying is that uh, the conference was a big triumph for Ramaphosa because his slate of candidates got elected. Now, what is the triumph? Because Mm. what has he done in the last five years that has shown us that there's a commitment to real transformation in the country. There's Mm. incredible violence, which he hardly says anything about. There's a lot of corruption allegations against people who are high up on the ANC election lists. What is happening to the prosecution of those people and the police investigations of them? There's serious things like flood damage in KZN, which has not had adequate state support. In the case of the person who came top of the list in the NEC elections, former premier of KZN, Sikhle Sigalala, he diverted water that was meant for relief of the poor to his home when he was premier. Amongst Mm. others, there's other reports. People who are charged with distributing uh, care and resources to communities stealing some of those. So we've got a situation where there's widespread pilfering of state resources, hits on nightclubs, on schools, on taverns, on all sorts of things every second day. We hear about this, and we don't really have adequate responses from the government, and the president is silent. If you look at the whole period of the lockdown, there were a lot of killings and assaults that were reported, and he never said a word about that violence. Now, the Constitution is very clear about the use of violence and commitment to peace. How can the president be silent about that? In this article, uh, Professor, you also appear to suggest that there is little difference uh, between Jacob Zuma era and the present. Is that a legitimate interpretation? Well, I'm not suggesting that um, Ramaphosa himself is building a home like in, in Kandla, diverting state resources himself. I don't know what his private life, sexual life is, but no one has alleged that he's raped, as was alleged in the Zuma rape trial, which was a very unsatisfactory trial. So there's a Mm. whole lot of allegations uh, against Zuma, and in the case of the rape trial, he was acquitted, but I think it was unsatisfactory. Uh, Mm. People are not uh, making allegations like this, against Ramaphosa. However, the level of fraud in the period of lockdown was massive. The stealing Mm. of PPE um, material, uh, masks and so forth needed for healthcare workers. The stealing went into the millions, I think it may be billions, I can't remember, remember the figures. But it was a very high amount. And uh, consequently, uh, one cannot say they're exactly the same, but there's a large amount of continuity. And uh, Ramaphosa kept many of the same people who were fingered by the Zondra Commission and are being investigated by the SIU and others, kept them in his cabinet. And they were also in head office. 
Asa Machashule was in head office. Nomzula Mokonyane, who came very high up as Deputy Secretary General, has been fingered by the Zondo Commission for handouts from Bosasa for her security mm. and Christmas gift alleged uh, anyway. So what I'm suggesting is there are continuities in that the people who were and big figures in the Zuma era remain big figures in the Ramaphosa era, and especially in the list of the ANC NEC. Some of them are, are very high up, are people who've committed, convicted of gender based violence. Others who are fingered for a whole lot of other things are high up in the ANC list. Some of them have been in cabinet remain in cabinet at this moment. And lastly, Professor, when you speak of statements at the conference being mainly cliches, is this not an intellectual uh, snobbery or on what do you base it? You know, I'm not suggesting that these people are half words or that they are, that I'm so clever and they so dumb, you know. All I'm mm-hmm. saying is that the ANC used to be an exciting place where people debated a lot of ideas. Now, if you look at the December conference and the second round, you didn't get the sense of debate of a lot of ideas. You got a lot of cliches and a lot of uh, vivifying for some person or some other person. And this is a different thing from having serious debates about the direction of the country, about the direction of the ANC, about rebuilding the ANC. There was an organizational report, but one has no real idea of how they're going to rebuild the ANC, what is being done at grassroots level, what is being done at other levels, especially when the leadership itself is tainted. So I don't get the sense that the ANC is at all like it used to be. Now, I don't want to suggest it's only when I was there that everything was fine. But when I was there, it was very exciting and we had a a lot of debates. Nowadays, people don't debate. I don't know if they read. Um, And in those days, young people used to be reading and debating all sorts of theories. And that was very, very exciting. There are researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, speaking to Krima Media's Polity about his column titled, Let's Not Have Illusions Over ANC Conference Election Results. We Need a Reset.